Now, is it or isn't it? Depending on your perspective, Labour's membership reforms are either a clause for a moment, the biggest modernisation since the party was founded, or a power grab by the unions and a retreat by the Labour leadership. The answer probably lies somewhere in between. Because although the relationship with the union barons is being recast, it won't fully take effect for many years, if then. Siobhan Kennedy reports. He's been promising a shake-up of the Labour Party's relationship with the unions, and today Ed Miliband said he delivered it. From now on, Labour leadership contests will be decided by a one-member, one-vote election. On the face of it, less power for the unions. But are the changes as radical as Mr Miliband would have us believe? Anybody looking at the scale of these reforms will see how big they are. They're changing our financial relationship with the trade unions, they're changing the way local Labour parties work, and they're also changing the way we elect the leadership of our party. So these are big reforms, they're the right reforms, and they're about giving ordinary people a say in our party. Under the current system for selecting a Labour leader, MPs count for a third of the votes, party members another third, and the unions voting as a bloc the final third. But that's now being scrapped in favour of one member, one vote. And only those union members who opt in and become affiliate members of the Labour Party will be allowed to have a say. Forcing members to opt in, some say, is all about trying to dilute the power of the unions, giving them less influence over who ultimately controls the Labour Party, something that even Tony Blair didn't manage to do. But others argue the change is less profound and that union bosses will have as much influence over party members as ever they did. And let's not forget, Ed Miliband isn't severing ties completely. The rules over political donations aren't changing, which means unions will be able to sink as much money into the Labour Party as they did in the past, which arguably gives them as much, if not more, influence. The changes certainly pleased Labour activists on the doorstep in London today. It is a gamble, but I think that that's, that's why I think Ed Miliband's being radical about this. And, you know, it's going to make the, the process more transparent, more, more accountable. And, and you know, if, if there are some union members who don't take that, that proactive step, then, you know, that's a shame to, to, to lose their support. But equally, those that do take that, that proactive step are probably far more likely to be engaged in the Labour Party. And that, that's going to really root us back into to the workplace, which is, which is obviously where the Labour Party's uh, roots come from. Ed Miliband embarked on reforming the party's relationship with the unions after a selection row in Falkirk last year, when Len McCluskey, the Unite Union boss, was accused of vote rigging to favour a preferred candidate. The unions were noticeably absent today, though the Conservatives were out in force. Well, Ed Miliband promised big change, but absolutely nothing's changed. Uh, he is, in fact, if anything, giving the unions even more power to select candidates, to by the policies of the party. This is a complete letdown uh, from a weak leader. Of course, it was the union's block vote that ushered Ed Miliband to power in 2010. But there's been pressure on him to distance himself and his party from the union's grip. But whether today's reforms are enough to achieve that in any meaningful way is far from clear.